Hi and welcome to this session where we're going to talk about stage management as well as front of house management. So today we're basically going to outline these two different departments and how they may coincide at some point of the theater production process. We're also going to look at the people who are involved and the types of tasks and responsibilities that they have during the production and of course before during the rehearsal process and things like that to make sure that everything goes how it's supposed to go when a show moves into a theater space. So heading straight into it, first we are going to discuss front of house, which is sometimes abbreviated as FOH. Now front of house deals with anything where the audience is involved or the patrons at a theater. So we're looking at areas like, of course, the auditorium, the lobby or the foyer, concession stand, box office, any place that is accessible to the public and not necessarily the performers or the people who are involved in the creative aspect of the production. As you can guess, front of house is managed by the front of house manager and they are also assisted by ushers and box office staff. Backstage or back of house or rear of house, depending on who's speaking, as you can guess, refers to any places that are not accessible by the public but are used by the people involved in the production. So, of course, the rehearsal space, if that is on site at the theater, the dressing rooms, the offstage and onstage areas. And in the back of house, the stage manager is in charge. So, we did a lesson previously on the production company and the roles in the production company all of those creative roles the designers the operators the technicians um the stage hands all of those people are under the jurisdiction of the stage manager so we just identified the two parts of the theater that we're going to be outlining today uh in terms of front of house and back of house so of course the front of house boss is the front of house manager and the back of house boss is the stage manager. So what kinds of things does a front of house manager do? So first they will receive details on the production from the producer or the stage manager or whoever is liaising with them. They will then plan a seating chart. So they will be very familiar with the seating of the auditorium. Um, and then they will look at how many people are expected to attend. Um, they'll look at if the prime minister is coming, if there are specially invited guests, if the disabled, the elderly, children, things like that. And they will plan the seating for the event accordingly. Then they'll delegate ushers for each area and each task. So they'll say, okay, you will stay by the door and take tickets. You will guide people during the show. Um, you will manage whatever area. You will greet people. They will assign different ushers to different tasks. Then they will conduct a briefing. So they'll speak to their team and say, okay, this is the show that we have going on today. Um, this is what you should expect. If this happens, just talk to me. Um, remind them of the emergency procedures, anything that's special, specially um, catered for the show that is going to be put on. They will also speak directly to the stage manager uh, in terms of opening the house. So this is, of course, where the auditorium is available for people to come and sit before the show. Um, when intermission should happen, um, when the second half of the show should commence, uh, and so on and so on. They will also, of course, oversee the front of house team while the production is going on. So if there's anything that arises and there are uh, several potential audience issues that can arise, I know that from first-hand knowledge, um, they are the person who is in charge and will direct things like that. Now, when it comes to the ushers, they have to do things like greet the audience when they enter the space. So they'll make them feel welcome. They'll say, hi, good evening. Welcome to So by So. They may also scan tickets or collect ripped ticket stubs. Um, this, this particularly becomes important if you have like a giveaway or something like that. They may sell or distribute programs or pamphlets. They'll definitely assist with the opening of the house. So this is, of course, as I said, where the auditorium is opened for the public to come and sit before the show. 
they will coordinate the seating so they will direct people most times in a, in an auditorium you're seated from the front first and then you fill up the front and you go row by row by row until you make it to the back so they will direct people as to where they should sit so it's not just bare chaos in the auditorium where there's assistance needed for people who may have challenges walking um they will assist them as well um if somebody if it has come with a baby or something like that and they can't manage on their own you might have a helpful usher who will help them out um they ensure that you adhere to the rules of the auditorium so things like no eating no drinking no flash photography in the auditorium um, if you are disturbing the other audience members, they will sort of, you know, keep that in line and things like that. And they are the first point of contact for any audience related issues um, and emergencies. Of course, if there's uh, a reason to evacuate or, as I said, if somebody's disturbing you, you'll speak to an usher and so on and so on. So that's it for front of house management. We're looking at stage management now. Um, so the stage manager, as I said, is the boss behind the scenes. So the producer will select them to lead the production all the way through every single step of the production process. So everything that happens in a production, it's a very intensive task, a very intensive role. Everything that happens in a production, the stage manager is very heavily involved from before the actors even come in and start to read the script until everything is taken down and put into storage possibly even weeks after the production the stage manager is involved at every single point so as uh, they have the widest variety and longest list of responsibilities um, if the stage manager falls apart then the entire show falls apart they provide support to everybody who works on the production, the director, actors, technical team, house staff, and so on, everybody. And their tasks, of course, will vary depending on the production, but there are certain responsibilities that always remain the same. So as you see the t-shirt on the side says, I'm a stage manager. Nobody notices what I do until I don't do it. And the stage manager is a really, really important person in a production company to make sure that everything runs smoothly. So what are some of their tasks? Well, during rehearsals, um, first of all, the stage manager attends every rehearsal and every single production meeting. Um, most times they will actually conduct um, the meetings. They also conduct the rehearsals in a sense, even though the director might be the person who is dealing with the actors, the stage manager will conduct um, when the rehearsal begins, um, when it ends, the stage manager might say when the actors need to take a break and so on. So they keep a production book, which is also called a production Bible that contains all the pertinent information referring to the production. So things like um, contacts for the cast and crew, um, contacts for anybody, anybody who has to deliver things on set, anybody that is involved in the production in any way, sponsors, um, all of these things, the stage manager has that in their Bible. Um, as well as contracts to do with spaces. Um, so if they have to rent a space, they'll have the contracts and the legal documents for the space, any licenses that are needed. The stage manager handles literally everything. Um, throughout the rehearsal, they create what you call a prompt book, which is which we're going to look at in more depth in a little bit, but it's a copy of the script that contains all the changes, all the notes, and all the cues. Um, and when the company loads in to the performance space, the director hands over all of the responsibilities to the stage manager. Now, this is a common question that is asked in exams and things like that. Um, but on the show night or whenever it comes to the actual show, um, show morning, it might be the director goes their way and they might sit in the audience or they might not be there at all. Um, and the stage manager handles everything from there. Um, this starts with dress and tech rehearsal. So the director will be involved in a dress rehearsal, but the stage manager is the person who really runs a tech rehearsal because they are very closely linked to the technical team in, in terms of stagecraft with set, lighting, sound, costume, that kind of thing. Um, now, most times the stage manager, so in some places they call the deputy stage manager or DSM. Some people might call them the SM. 
and most times they are assisted by an ASM, assistant stage manager, who also handles um, quite a lot of these tasks. And it's a very intensive role, as I said previously. So that was during rehearsals. Now, during performance, the stage manager is the most <laughs> important person again. So they use a the prompt book to call the show. Um, in calling the show, they have, as you can see in the picture there, they have a headset, which are called comms or cams, through which they communicate to the operators for lighting and sound. Um, so calling the show involves going through the script as the show is happening and any cues that need to happen, the stage manager announces those cues and make, make sure that they happen on time. Um, they coordinate the opening of the curtain, well, the opening of the house, the opening of the curtain, even things like playing the national anthem before the show, um, and any sound or lighting cues that have to happen, the stage manager is the one who calls them. So they have to know the production, like the back of their hand, they have to know what happens when, and of course, they also have it there to read in real time. Uh, so there are many videos on YouTube of a stage manager calling a show. If you look on the screen here, they have a television usually at their desk where they can see what is happening on stage. So they will sit in one of the wings stage side and they'll see exactly what's happening on stage when it's happening so that they'll be able to tell what is supposed to happen next. So they are looking between their prompt book and the screen. They will also time the show and make sure it goes on time. That's another thing during rehearsal, the stage manager will, will tell the director, okay, right now we're running a bit slow. The show should be two and a half hours and we're at three hours. So you kind of need to speed up the actors a bit or pick up the pace because we really need, need to get that half an hour cut off. Um, that's something that the stage manager will look over as well. And then on the night of the show, they will also time it um, to make sure that everything runs smoothly and you don't get kicked out of the auditorium. So there are many very useful videos on YouTube of stage managers calling a show. It's really fascinating. Um, and I'll direct you to look at one now. I'll include one in the description. Now looking at the prompt book, this is a prompt book that I did when I was in university. It's really awful. Um, but this gives you a sort of idea of what it looks like. So we're looking at cues. A cue is an indication for anything to happen. So you have lighting cues, you have sound cues, you have entrances and exits. Um, so before a cue is called, and this is with calling the show, you have a standby. So each cue is ordered. So each cue has a number um, in the run of the show. So it starts at cue one for lighting and starts at Q1 for sound effects and you go all the way with however many cues you have. Some shows have hundreds and hundreds of cues um, throughout the entire duration of it. So a few moments before the cue is called, you'll have a standby. So you'll call over the comms and you tell them standby um, SFX Q1. So that's sound effects Q, sorry, SFX Q3. So this will be standby sound effects Q3. And then here standby LXQ4. And then, uh, so the operator will just be waiting with their finger on the button. So just press go. Um, and then you say go in the actual moment when it's supposed to be triggered. So sometimes you have movement cues, which is where the stage manager will look at the screen and they say, okay, when Holly stands fully, that is when I need to tell the light and cue to go. So that might be a blackout. Um, and I know that this is a, a line cue. So when K says, wait for me, that is when the sound is supposed to start. Um, and likewise here, you give a standby all the time, a few moments before the cue, and then you just say go um, whenever it is supposed to happen. You might call two cues at once if they're supposed to happen simultaneously, and so on and so on. Um, right, so you have a, sometimes you have a little legend in your prompt book, uh, so the whole essence of a prompt book is that if the stage manager would unfortunately fall sick or not be able to make it to a performance, somebody else, whether it's the assistant stage manager or somebody else, has to be able to pick up that book and understand clearly 
what to do and when to do it. So it has to be extremely detailed. Well, not necessarily detailed, but it has to be extremely organized. Um, and that's the whole essence of a prompt book. Anytime a stage manager does a prompt book, they should be able to pass it on to somebody else. And that person picks it up immediately and can call the show in their absence. So this is another little excerpt from a prompt book. Again, you see standby SFX Q1. Q11 and then go stand by LXQ6 and a 6.6, .6, I believe. Go, go, go. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Now it's your turn. We are going to look at a clip from the National Theatre Arts Company's performance of the Master of Carnival. And I want you to imagine that you are the stage manager. Can you identify any cues in this section? So a cue, of course, is a trigger for something to happen with sound or with lighting. So where can you identify these changes and how might we then put that into a prompt book? Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm getting cold. Ha! Your food! Take it away. But there'll be no... I say take it away. What time they announce? Any results later till 10 o'clock. You're coming over? Of course. I'm going to bring my radio too. Mm -hmm. Ma! Ha! The van! She's right! The van! She's right! The van! The van! The van! The van! The van! The Come now, man. The robe. Right, so this is from the actual script from that scene. Um, and I have helped you out a little bit. I've put an indication where different things should be. And I'm just reminding you, before every cue, you should do a standby a few moments before. So, um, these are also the cues that will be in the scene. What are the changes that we saw? Um, we saw music playing, and then we saw a spotlight coming up center stage. And we saw when they happened. So that was when the cue should be triggered. That would be the go, right? Um, and the first one happened when Sheila said what time the music started playing. And the second one happened when Del Pino um, stood center stage. The spotlight came up center stage. So how would this look in a prompt book? So I made it a bit easy. Uh, of course, we always start off with a standby. So the first cue that comes here at B will be the sound cue which is where the music plays when Sheila says what time. So it's a sound cue coming with a line. And before, we must have a standby, so standby sound one. Now this is probably in the middle of the play or to the end of the play, so it wouldn't be cue one, but just for this example, you stand by a few moments before, and then the stage manager would say sound, go, at the exact moment when it's supposed to happen. Then the next cue that's coming, as we established, is the light cue, which should happen here when he dances in time with the music. So when a few moments before, you'll have standby light one or whatever number it is. And then in the exact moment, you'll say light go. And that's really it for stage management and front of house. There are some really great resources online that help to understand this in more depth. So I will include them in the description as well. Thank you for watching and I hope everything was clear.